and Mary Clo. I'm watching Michael while I work out, and now you're watching what I'm doing right now. So we got the Sony Alpha 7 S Mark II to take with us on our trip down to California and back. And so far, I've been using just the regular Canon kit lens, the 28 to 135 that came with my 7D, adapted to the Sony camera with an EF to E mount. But today in the mail from B&H, we got the Carl Zeiss Sonar FE 2.8. 35 millimeter. It's a native E-mount lens, so I'm going to swap these out and see how it looks. As an added bonus, I made sure that this Sony lens that we were getting had the proper thread size to fit my anamorphic adapter onto the front of it so that I can be shooting in anamorphic. Ooh. Okay, here is a shot with the Canon. It's set to 28 millimeters. I'm going to attempt to move the camera as little as possible and uh, put the other lens on. And here is the Sony lens. I did move the camera a little bit, a tiny bit, I'm sorry. Damn I just, it, I couldn't hold it still. Damn it, threw it. Yeah, I tried to do this on a tripod, and I don't know if I can show you, but the way that this thing mounts, oh, I need to manually focus, pardon. The way that this thing attaches to the bottom of the camera, it prevents me from removing or putting on the Canon lens without taking it off the tripod mount, which is kind of annoying. Frust frustrating? Yeah, frustrando. Mm. It looks like this lens is letting in more light. Your face is blowing out a little bit. Wow, and maybe I'm just too hot. <laughs> This is the Canon lens on the Sony Alpha 7 S Mark II. Abby is laughing over there because this is like the 17th take because things keep going wrong. Anyway, the Canon lens is set to 28 millimeters. I'm not familiar enough with crop factors to know what that translates to after it goes through the EF2 E mount on this uh, full frame sensor, but I'm gonna switch to the uh, Zeiss lens. And this is roughly the same shot. I tried to move the camera as little as possible with the Zeiss 35 millimeter. I'm going to attempt to put the anamorphic lens adapter on the front of it. Comparing this shot to the last one, it does look a bit wider. That's good. Look at that bokeh back there. That looks really nice. Wait, what? Bokeh! What are you talking about? Bokeh! The lights. It's a... Just for funsies, this is a shot comparing the field of view of the iPhone 7 with the anamorphic lens on it, and the Sony Alpha 7 with the 35 millimeter lens with the anamorphic adapter on it. Dang. It is obvious that the iPhone's field of view is wider, so I guess I'll use that in situations where I need a really wide field of view. This is what the Sony camera looks like with the 35 millimeter lens and the anamorphic adapter on it, and the length of that whole setup is about the same length of the entirety of the Canon lens that I had on the camera before. So this little guy just got lighter and smaller. Todd. I have made a huge mess. Pretty much. This is over the last like two, two, three days. Yeah, it's just piled up. What do you want to do about it? Well, I guess I'll clean it at some point. So what do we got in these bags right here? Well, we got some Einstein. Okay. Not the man. <laughs> Einstein's body is no, in this just bag. Got some of him. Some Einstein. <laughs> yeah, some. <laughs> That's a story. Then we got some responsible people in this bag. Boy, this is not sounding too good. <laughs> <laughs> Cinema Studios is just a front. Okay, <laughs> we're like a murder factory. And then we got some hoodies, and yeah, just some other shirts. So instead of using boxes, because boxes could be cumbersome, we decided to, uh, to uh, put in bags will make more space. Theoretically, while well, it looks like at VidCon, we're not, we're not bringing trash into the convention. We're just bringing our solid merch. This will let the merch mold to fit the size of whatever vehicle we stuff it into, rather than having to shove cardboard boxes. boxes. It makes more sense. So I, the way I figure it is that I could probably put about three of these in my car, and then the rest could go in the Jeep, and then I'll have my personal belongings, and we have some of the odds and ends, and then we'll cram uh, you and a Kelsey in, in the Jeep. Are we taking the stickers in the interior of a car? this year. Yeah, that's something we, t we talked about. And so the stickers are over there. They're going to go inside the buildings with us, wherever building we go into. So if we stop to go to the restroom, tagging along with us. Uh, I don't know if you're going to tell the story. I was about to tell the story. I'll, I'll, I'll let you do it. Last year, we drove down with all of the stickers in Todd's trunk, and yeah. they just sat there the whole time. Like, was that the same trip that we got stuck in the desert yeah. for a sec because yeah. your car was overheating? Uh, yes, it was. But we, when we arrived in Anaheim, some of the stickers had, like, melted. <laughs> 
<laughs> melted, yeah. It got a little bubbly, melted. It was not a pretty sight. We decided to, this time, keep him in uh, air-conditioned uh, atmosphere. Is that how you say that? That's a way to sure. say it. Science. I just got a few shots with this camera outside and I like it. The one thing is that this lens is not a zoom lens and that makes me a little bit sad. So I can't zoom in on stuff. Can you zoom in now? Right at this moment? Wow, look at that zoom. Hello, Sari. Hello. Do you want to know how I know in my old age I'm devolving into eccentricities? <laughs> yes. Does it have to do with what's in that box? So I got these shoes a while ago, right? Yep. And I liked them enough that I decided to get some more. So this reminds me of the cartoon Doug. Mm -hmm. There was an episode where they showed his closet and it was just the same thing that he wears in every episode, like all the way down. You're gonna be a cartoon character, Michael. Yep, I'm working on my, my version of my Steve Jobs outfit, which is, you know, <laughs> the same thing every day, just a bunch of them. You got the shoes, but you need to choose the pants and the shirt now too. Okay. I did just buy these pants. They don't have a hole in the crotch anymore. Oh, good. Yeah. I've never purchased this model of pant before. I gotta test that for a Still bit. Still in the search. Yeah. Okay, Tectonics episode three is getting really close to being done. It's really close. But it is now four in the morning and we are supposed to leave for California today, technically. Well, I guess if we're being technical, we're going to Salt Lake City today and then technically tomorrow going to California, but it's late, so I'm pausing that for now. Before I forget, we are launching a poster contest. We are looking for people to help us design an 11 by 17 poster. It can be related to anything having to do with Cinema Studios. The deadline is the 30th of June, and we're allowing two submissions per person. We're gonna take the winning poster, and we're gonna get a bunch of prints made, and then we're gonna sell it in the cinema store. And yes, the artist will receive royalties. So if uh, this is a thing you wanna do, you can get cracking and then submit your poster to bit.ly.com slash box. I am unsurprisingly pretty tired right now. I've talked before about how I'm very thankful that Callie showed up when she did because I was just drowning under the workload. However, I think I overestimated how much that would free up my time because now rather than feeling like I'm 20 feet underwater, I feel like I'm 10 feet underwater, which is closer to the surface, but still there's just so much work to be done all the time. I remember when EcoGeek started getting bigger and like Caitlin Hoffmeister got tasked with overseeing all of SciShow and she eventually came to edit fewer and fewer videos because she was spending more and more time doing administrative stuff, scheduling, planning, emailing. And I remember back then thinking, I don't get it. Like, all of that stuff can't take that much time. Why can't she spend more time editing videos like the rest of the team? Well, I am happy to admit that I was very naive and mistaken about how much time all of that administrative stuff takes. All of the stuff involved in running a business takes a ton of time away from me being able to edit and do sound and all of the creative things that I really loved, the whole reason in the first place that I wanted to create a company where I could do that but more and bigger. So it's an interesting conundrum to be in where as the company gets bigger and more successful, I find myself having less time to do the things that I wanted the company to do in the first place. Maybe I should look at it like, even though I'm not going to be the one doing all of the editing and creating all of the time, I should instead think about it like my company, as an extension of myself, is doing all of the creative stuff. I don't know. But we are looking at hiring a new editor soonish to take over the editing of Kate Tectonics because right now the thing that prevents Kate Tectonics from getting done faster is that I don't have the time to work on it very often. So hopefully we can find someone that we can trust to take over that project. We've got 
a couple other new projects in the pipeline that uh, Tyler is going to be overseeing. So the current plan is that we're going to take Tyler off of the daily vlogs, put him on those things, and then get both Abby and Callie trained up to do daily vlog editing. Cinema Studios certainly is a different place now than it was a year ago. The sky is starting to get a little bit lighter. I guess it's morning time. So when I get home, I'm gonna go to sleep. In the morning, I have to host an episode or three of SciShow, and then we're gonna be on our way to Salt Lake City. So thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.